Hello, everyone. All right, I'll go ahead and get started. I don't want to get too behind on time. And then we'll just let people in as we're, as we're going. So good morning to everyone. Thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Raquel Block. I am the co-working manager for Chains Labs. I am Navajo and I live in Pinyon, Arizona on the Navajo Nation. <clears throat> I'm Kiaani, born for Sendra Kenneth. My Chays are Ashinghe and my Nalis are Totochitni. I'm originally from Shanto, Arizona, and I am a new, the new co-working manager. I started last year and I'll be managing the space once our physical building opens in Tuba City, Arizona. And we do have the co-working um, grand, grand opening plans coming up. So please keep a lookout for that. And I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. <clears throat> um, so thank you for taking the time to be with us here today. First off, I'd like to give a brief introduction of Chains Labs for those of you who aren't already familiar with our organization. Officially, Chains Labs is a native-led and native-controlled nonprofit organization based on the Navajo and Hopi nations. Here at Chains Labs, our goal and our mission is to provide creative workspace, tools, resources, and knowledge for native entrepreneurs. How we accomplish our goals and mission is through our different programs. We have the co-working program, which I manage, <clears throat> our business incubator program, we have our kinship lending program, and we also have another um, exciting program that's currently in the planning stages, and we will be able to announce those details at a later time. So these are the different programs that Chains Lab currently has. We have the co-working, the business incubator, the kinship lending, and a new program coming soon. And here we have our mighty team that helps make Chains Lab the great organization that it is today. <clears throat> Uh, we do have our co-founders, Jessica Stago and Heather Fleming. Heather is also our executive director, director, and Jessica is one of the coaches also for our incubator, and then she's the venture fund manager. We have Cecilia So, she's our incubator coach, as well as the incubator director. And then we have Joe Elliott Nez, he's one of our coaches for the incubator. We have Marsha Grayeyes, our finance director. <clears throat> we have Holly Patterson. One of the newer members on our team, she's one of our incubator coaches, as well as our program coordinator, I believe. And then we have Swavosky Little, he's our newest team member. And today's his birthday. Happy birthday to Swavosky. I don't know if he's on today right now, <clears throat> but today's his birthday. So if you see him on um, Facebook or any of Chains Labs platforms, please wish him a happy birthday. Uh, he's our kinship lending loan officer. And then we have Christine Laughter, who's our kinship lending director. And then Tim Deal, he's one of our incubator coaches as well as our kinship coaches. And then myself, I'm the co-working manager. And my position is to manage the upcoming space that's coming up and um, later, and within the next couple of months, we'll be having uh, the first of our grand opening events and celebrations. <clears throat> Those are currently in the planning stages. Um, construction is currently still underway on the, the new headquarters, which is located right next to Tuba City Chapter House on Main Street. For those of you who may not be familiar with what a co-working co space is, it is a community space uh, for business owners and entrepreneurs to use and to help uh, operate and manage your business. This space in particular will serve our Native entrepreneurs and small business owners, especially those based on the Navajo and Hopi reservations in the Four, four Corners area. So later this year, we will have a brand new co-working space available for you all to use. And some of the services that we'll be able to offer are some tools that could be useful to your business. Tools such as desk-based Wi-Fi access, a color printing, in-person coaching sessions, and a lot more. <clears throat> we also have to bring, um, we also plan to bring back in-person trainings for those who are interested. And our list of co-working services is always changing and getting updated. And so if you have any ideas on how Chains Labs can support your business and your entrepreneurial journey there at our space, please let us know. <clears throat> We're really excited to bring this community space for everyone to help with building and growing your business. So please stay tuned for more information. Um, to come as our construction gets closer and closer to completions, which should be very, very soon. Fingers crossed, think good thoughts for us. Uh, one of our most popular questions we get here at Chains Labs is how do I start a business? All of our programs and services here are de de designed <laughs> to help our native entrepreneurs and artisans, our local vendors, and those we like to call change makers because that's what local business owners and entrepreneurs are, they're ch your change makers. Um, if you are a native entrepreneur or a small business owner yourself, <clears throat> please know that you are absolutely crucial 
to our local economies and Change Labs is here to help you to both start up um, or if you do have your business and strengthen your businesses. For a brief overview of the business incubator program, it is one of the only native led business incubators for native entrepreneurs in this country. And we're right here on the Navajo Nation and the Hopi Nation. This program is led by our director, director of business incubation, Cecilia So. And starting this year, it is a six month program for native entrepreneurs who want support and training on how to start and operate your business. If you're interested and would like assistance with things like your logo or website design um, or how to set up and maintain your bookkeeping and finances, uh, please visit our website for more information here at nativestartup.org slash incubator. Next is a, another question that we get pretty often is how do I get help to with running my business? There are so many aspects to being an entrepreneur and the answer to your solution, your, the answer or solution to your questions uh, may not always be obvious. Here at Chains Labs, one of our driving factors is kinship, building relationships among communities and nations. And how Chains Labs can help here is through our business coaching appointments. We offer free virtual 90 minute appointments with any of our business incubators, or sorry, business coaches. Our coaches are available from Monday on Mondays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and they each have their own area of expertise, depending on the kind of support you're looking for. <clears throat> we have a team of very, very bright and eager coaches and they're incredibly knowledgeable in each of their specialties and would be able to assist you um, in the areas that you're needing your help with your business. The coaches are able to assist you in areas from marketing to accounting and bookkeeping systems, or if you're just starting out, <clears throat> They can assist you with creating a business model and navigating the Navajo Nation systems for things such as your business site lease and registering with the Navajo Nation Business Regulatory. The, um, this coming Monday, we have Coach Holly. She can assist you with things like brand development, uh, market analysis, social media marketing, business, um, and then business registration within uh, New Mexico. Uh, you can find more information or book your appointment with her or any of our other co um, coaches throughout the month at nativethreadup.org slash events. And then just be sure to note which stage you're signing up for and how, which coach is assigned for each day. Another common question we get here at Chains Labs is how do I create a website? Until Chains Labs can go back to hosting open hour studios at our um, headquarters in Tuba City, we will refer you to our YouTube channel. We currently have over 50 recorded sessions and discussions, each designed for native business owners and they're pretty much all of them are led by native entrepreneurs and creatives or really special partners of Chains Labs. <clears throat> to access many of our past sessions and listings of resources such as grants and other informational events, um, I'll refer you to our link here, nativestartup.org slash resources. We update this page pretty regularly, so be sure to check in every now and then for upcoming opportunities. Another great resource we have to offer are our social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. <clears throat> and I do recommend that you check those pages out as well for regular postings and updates on what Chains Labs is up to, especially the pictures on the construction. That one has been really, really exciting to see. Um, we like to change posts from many of our partners and others in our network for great opportunities and resources that we think that would be useful to you and all of our native creatives, our business owners and entrepreneurs. And lastly, there is a whole spectrum of who we consider native entrepreneurs. And we here at Chains Lab have been curating a list of them. If you're in the market for finding other native service providers who can help you with your business, we currently have over 600 native owned businesses listed in there. And that we think that are really, really great resources for helping or starting up um, your business. Um, or maybe if you're just looking for um, products, native made products, you can visit the site here at resrising.org. If you're a native or own business owner or entrepreneur yourself, and you have services or products that you would like to provide for people and promote, feel free to add yourself to the listing there. It's free and it's a very simple process to get started. All right. If you have any questions about um, all of what we're offering at Chains Labs here or any of our services, <clears throat> and you would like to know where to start, feel free to email me. My direct email is raquel at nativestartup.org, or you can visit the Chains Labs website. So there's a lot tons of information there is that it'll be nativestartup.org slash actually just not up this nativestartup.org and now before we start with our guest speaker for today i want to touch on our workshop etiquette as usual and how we can be respectful of our guest time today 
We do ask that you stay on mute during the presentation unless you're called upon, <clears throat> but do please feel free to populate the chat box with any questions that you have, and we'll make sure to try to get to them before the end of our session today. And then also a reminder, our session is being recorded today and will be available on Chance Lab's YouTube channel later this week. For the first one of the hour, introducing our guest for today, Arlene Ed. Arlene is born, was born and raised in Shanto, the community of Shanto, which is in the, one of the neighboring communities of Tuba City, Arizona. <clears throat> she attended school locally and raised her family there. Uh, she currently resides in Santan Valley. She is a business, finance, and insurance consultant with 38 years of experience in the county. As of January 2017, she became the board member for SEDC, which is Shanto Economic Development Corporation, just a for-profit organization under the community of Shanto, and is serving as their president for chair. In her bio, she says that it's been a quite a journey to giving back to her community as an entrepreneur at heart, and she has a passion for small businesses. Her passion has given her the opportunity to work with great colleagues and departments to bring new and improved economic development to the community of Shanto. She has gained great experiences and insight into applying <clears throat> new knowledge into improving and developing her community. And she is willing to serve where she is needed. And we are really, really happy to have her today. Eileen, thank you for being here. I will turn the time over to you. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I have been she ya Arlene Edin Shia Tori Chitni in the Shle. Look at the net basha chin kin the chitni a shitche ado tapahi e the shinalit. I am better water clan, born Puerto Rico clan. My grandfather, maternal grandfather's red house clan, and my paternal grandfather is uh, water's edge among the waters clan. So I'm happy to be here today. And I appreciate the invitation to change labs. So today I will be um, speaking on small business bookkeeping and accounting. Um, as Raquel has mentioned, I have 38 or more experience in uh, accounting and bookkeeping. Uh, currently, I assist um, small businesses with business services through my uh i start my startup business services uh called Aline business services so uh in the in the world of uh, entrepreneurship in small businesses uh you become a sales leader you become a manager and a customer service representative or just some of the hats you wear as a small business owner and now you can add bookkeeper and accountant to that list unless you're running um unless you're actually running a, an accounting or bookkeeping business, um, keeping rec rec records for your business can seem overwhelming. Everything from paying your taxes to planning for the future rides, uh, future rides on having accurate numbers. No one art article can tell you everything you need to know about small business accounting, but I, here I put together some tips to help to keep it all simple as simply as possible. Some of the small businesses we have on the reservation in surrounding areas are in construction and in startup businesses in different um, industries around the reservation. Uh, some of them are in our um, food trucks or any type of other um, people that travel on the road with their business. And we have jewelry also, people in doing jewelry sales we have people in construction. Whether you're just starting uh, a small business or you've had one a few years, uh, these easy tips will help you to stay organized. Um, first of all, uh, when you decide to start your business, you are just hoping to make more money than, than you put in. Now it's time to get up to speed on common bookkeeping and accounting terms. Uh, don't be embarrassed if you aren't familiar with all the technical definitions. Uh, it's time to learn as you go through your business. Uh, so we will. I will go ahead and share some of the lingo of bookkeeping and accounting. Um, just just some basic terms that you can come, become familiar with. Uh, one of the things that's um, always going to be by your side is a calculator, and also a journal sheet. So uh, and and pens or pencils. Uh, most likely because you're going to be erasing a lot of things. 
So um, just to give you some ideas. Um, revenue is one of the terms. Revenue is uh, income. It, uh, when you make a sale, it's a transaction you receive uh, for cash, uh, also known as money coming in. Sale can be a service or a product. Service meaning um, um, if you're into a restaurant business, you serve people. If you're into uh, bookkeeping services, you have business services. If you have, uh, if you're into health, um, some type of a health organization business, you you um, cater your health services. Product is more like um, when you sell. Um, if you're running a C store or a bike shop or you know uh, a mini um, auto shop, you you um, actually sell parts. Uh, you exchange per merchandise for your cash. And those are the two types of, of um, uh, sales that you can have in a small business. What is an expense? Expense is another term in the bookkeeping accounting world, uh, also called money out. An expense is something you pay for, like supplies, um, office supplies, maintenance supplies, utilities, you pay rent. Some of these um, payments are fixed um, expenses, which is normally utilities, rent, insurance payments, bank charges, um, interest expense, uh, payroll taxes. Those are fixed. Uh, there are a certain amount that goes out every month. Uh, and then there's other um, expenses that you have to take care of and make sure that you um, are um, able to save receipts for, which is travel expense. And some of these expenses will be a lot one month and maybe minimal um, the, the following month. Uh, lodging expense, meals, entertainment expense, and fuel expense. Uh, also with fuel, you also can maintain a uh, business, business mileage log from when you, um, a lot of people, they travel to go out to their customers to offer um, their services. So during that time, you keep a log of all your uh, business mileages. Um, the other part is um, your expense to your vehicle, your auto repair and maintenance, any type of costs for your vehicle other than your uh, office equipment, uh, anything that you use for your business. Those are expenses for your businesses. It's called money out. A liability is another term in, in the accounting world, a liability. A lot of people confuse liability and expenses. A liability is something you owe money on, such as a small business loan, a vehicle loan, a credit card, a personal loan, uh, somebody that loaned you money to start off your business. Maybe your parents um, gave you some money and you um, did an agreement with them to pay them back. Th that's a personal loan. So these are some of the uh, terms kind of uh, I'm sharing some of the basic terms that you can um, start to become familiar with as you start up your small business. What is an asset? An asset is another term that uh, a lot of people um, are not really aware of. The, the term asset uh, pertains to an item uh, your business owns uh, or you yourself as a sole proprietor a, an asset is something you own that is part of your business, a bank account, a checking account, a savings account, uh, office equipment, um, those that carry value like a copier or uh, anything, any machine, any tools. If you're a carpenter or um, electrician, you know, all these big machines and big tools, those are part of your assets and you need to list them with uh, what they are valued at today. Uh, your vehicle, if you're using your vehicle to be part of your business, your travels and everything. So your vehicle is also part of your asset. Um, 
The other one is your office building, maybe uh, your, your home, your personal home, a part of your home, you're using it as an office space. Let's say um, you have a single wide and you have an office at the end of that trailer and you have to calculate the square footage of that area and you um, make that a part of your um, business value uh, and count it as a, an office building or uh, an area where you can um, um, use it as an asset for your business. Uh, the land where you're at, I know on the reservation, we have no value uh, for land and property, but if you move off the reservation and you start your business, um, where you're at, your property, the value, where you have your business, that, that's all part of your asset too. And it needs to be part of your financials. All these assets, liabilities, expense, and uh, revenues are part of your um, financials at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter, at the, each month, you know, even daily, you can run these uh, numbers um, whenever you're going out for a loan or any type of um, transaction for your business. And uh, these numbers, as you calculate them, becomes part of your financials each each day, each week, each month, each quarter, each year. So uh, you have to save them. So what is a revenue? Revenue is income, like I said, your company makes on a sale to determine your profit. Subtract your expenses from your revenue. These are cash sales, your debit sales, your credit card sales any type of um, transaction that you use to bring uh, your revenue into your business, which is money in. And you have to calculate that. Uh, you have a net profit, net revenue, and a loss revenue. So that will be determined by how much revenue is coming in. And then you subtract all your expenses Expenses at the end of that total is your net or profit balance. Uh, what are your accounts receivable in your journal um, paperwork? Uh, when you're uh, a lot of times, um, a lot of people don't have access to soft accounting softwares or any type of. Um, mainly, a lot of people they don't really know or understand how to utilize a an accounting software so where do we start so it starts with a journal journal pages and i kind of put on here kind of like a uh, an example of a journal page so you date uh, you have a date column an account column you have a debit column and a credit column a debit is a plus column, a credit is a, sub, um, a minus column. So anytime when you have um, what are accounts, and it depends on the type of receivable or payables that you receive. The first one is accounts receivable, refers to uh, the money your customers owe you when you send them an invoice. It's how you, um, when you have a customer coming in, but they want to pay you later at a later date. Um, not They don't pay you right now, but they want to pay you at a later date. All those revenues go into accounts receivable. So you refer to, refer to those accounts as money your customers owe you when, and you generate start generating invoices for it and give them kind of like a date for them to pay you. It's either due today, due in 10 days, net 10 days, net 15 days, or net 30 days. So anything beyond that, they are, uh, it goes into, um, you can charge them late fees, you can charge, you know, all these other fees that, that you can accumulate. Um, so, you know, it's all part of the process. The other one are accounts payable. Accounts payable refers to the money you owe to your debt debtors, like your loan payments. Um, if you um, bought something from 
uh, a store, but they give you time to, to pay for it. You paid with a credit card instead of um, um, owing the store. Now you have accounts payable on your credit card. So your credit card starts accumulating all these charges on the, that account. And at the end of the month, the, um, the credit card company will send you a statement saying that this is what you owe and this is all your charges that you accumulated this past month and this is what you owe. Those go into accounts payable. So those, those are the two types of um, accounts that are kind of the uh, basic um, processes of how you can determine um, how, how much money is coming in now, um, money in now, like cash payments now, or um, cash payments that are deferred until at a later date. So there's two types of sales. There's um, cash sales right now, and there's accounts receivable for later on. And then also for payments, uh, expenses. You can pay for expenses now. Go to Home Depot or um, somewhere in uh, in town and go go buy the stuff that you need for your office. You can pay it today, or you can charge it to your credit card and make it part of your accounts receivable. Or even in the store, you can um, do a credit account with that store and they can give they can uh, send you uh, uh, an invoice later or not an invoice but more of like a purchase order for you to pay on at a later date which goes into your accounts are payable so you have two different transactions um so in your journals um these are how you will be able to um list uh, when you have a gas expense um, when it when you have a gas expense account um, it's a debit account because it's a plus into your expense and then it goes into your payables as a credit because the payable is a liability account so, and then you go into the next uh, transaction here is cash. Um, $900 came in, but the accounts receivable took $300, which means that this, there was a sale of $1,200, but you received cash for $900, but you put $300 of that into accounts receivable, meaning it's, you have to collect it at a later date. And the revenue is coming in from the lawn mowing, lawn mowing revenue, and it for twelve hundred dollars, which goes into a credit balance. On your the next transaction is your advertising. Um, it's an expense account. Um, it goes it goes into your debit column because it increases your debt, and then in cash, uh, you pay it right there for that expense. So your, your, it decreases your cash amount uh, from your pocket. So there's a $35 credit. The last one is your accounts payable. You have your paying, you paid on an account that was um, credited to you to pay at a later date. This is some a debt a debtor that you owed and you paid them $25 and you paid it with cash, and then that lessens your cash amount. So it becomes a credit to your um, cash bank account. So um, those are just some of the, the ways that you can start journalizing your transactions as you go from day-to-day -day businesses. And once you start doing that, it will start drawing a picture for you of where your finances are. Create the three must-have documents for financial services. Now that you know some of the key terms, you need to put them to use. These are three basic documents that will help you answer critical questions about your business. These, these will help you determine where to commit funds in the future and how to create your business plan. 
they will tell you the story of what is really going on in your business. So this next part will talk about the financial documents that are always a part of that will become into fruition as part of your business. And you will be able to take these um, documents yeah. to the banks, uh, someone that um, an investor or someone that is interested in, in your business. The first one is a profit and loss income statement. Is your prof business prof profitable? Your profit and loss statement is a summary of your revenue minus your expenses for a period of time. It shows your profits or losses at a glance for that chunk of time. Example, uh, you can run a monthly profit and loss statement. Uh, income is, as I said, is a revenue or sales minus your expenses equals your net income or loss. So on the right side here, um, I put a kind of a sample of an income statement. This income statement is, is the same as a profit and loss statement for the three months ending March 31st, 2006. So this is a quarterly statement that was run. So here it shows your revenues. Um, under revenues, you have your landscaping fees, your finance charges, and then uh, it lists year to date um, column. And then at the end is your percentage of that, um, uh, of those uh, income coming in. So your landscaping fees, um, if you're a landscaper, um, at the end of the year, you make $20,075. Your yearly end finance charge, in, um, which was against your income, is $100. So your total, um, your, in, your finance charges income that was coming in to your bank account uh, total $100. That's interest that your bank is paying you for having a checking account at your bank. So interest income. So both of those are totals or those two types of income. It totaled $20,175. And so down to the cost of sales. Uh, cost of sales are usually, um, and we'll talk about this at a, um, further down, but it has to do with inventory or merchandise that you're selling. So um, there's none here. So your gross profit is 20175 And you move down to your expenses. Um, this is another part of your uh, income statement. And you're under your expenses. You accumulated auto expense, commissions and fees expense, dues and subscriptions. Uh, insurance expense and your total expenses came out to $9,050, which is 48% of your um, of the um, of your income. So the, and then, uh, like I said, over on the left side, income minus expenses equals net income or loss. So they take the net revenue, the total revenue minus the total expense you come up with your net income. So it, your net income is your operating ex, uh, income at the end of the year. That's what you've made uh, for yourself at the end of the year after all the transaction that, that has gone through in through your business. So that's what you take to your tax person. The next um, financial document that will always be a part of your finances is called a balance sheet. How much is your business worth? Your balance sheet shows your assets, your liabilities, and, and your owner's equity for your business. It's basically a breakdown of what you owe versus what you own. Remember, assets are items owned by your company, and liabilities are things you owe on. Equity is the value of your business. So number one is your assets minus number two is your liabilities, which equals number three, which is your equity. Assets minus the liabilities is basically the value you place on your company if you had to put a price tag on it today. So here on the right side, uh, we have a kind of a sample balance sheet of a cake shop. 
your assets um, are anything that is a part of your business, merchandise, um, equipment, everything. So here at the cake shop, um, the assets are flour, fruit, cakes, cash and till, the cash in the till, delivery van, money in the bank, the oven, the building, money due from customers, which is uh, accounts receivable. But these are all your total assets. Liabilities is your money due to um, all your, all, all, everything that you owe, which is money due to the flour mill, money due to the uh, fruit growers, which are all in the, your accounts payable, your mortgage loans, your wages, um, your utility bills, your business rates, everything that you owe, which is your, uh, after you calculate all that, goes into your total liabilities. So you can take your total assets minus your liability. So your total net asset is $11,060, which is your total equity, equity, which is the value of your business today after you've um, gone through all of your transactions. Um, um, your balance sheet will give you a picture of exactly where your business is at and what the value of your business is. is. And this is uh, a part of the financials that you can also take to you. People that are interested in your business, your, um, your banks, um, your investors, and people that are willing to, um, when they ask you what's going on with your business, you can give them a picture of what's actually going on. The other one is a cash flow statement. Where is your business's cash going? This statement categorizes cash flow into three types of activities. Uh, the first one is the operating. How much does your business make day to day? Which is your total sales revenue. This is all revenue. Your accounts receivable, your cash in, your credit card sales, your debit sales, all of it. Your investing are the assets you purchase for your business paying off. Um, sometimes we have to invest in our office equipment. We have to invest in machines to make our products. We have to invest into shelves. We invest all kinds of stuff to, to uh, display our business. Cash spending on resources to operate your business includes assets, liabilities, and expenses. The last part is your financing. How much cash have you invested in your business? This can also reflect how much money you borrowed, but we believe it's best to operate your business debt-free. Always, always try to make your goal to run your business debt-free. When you're not making debt payments, you actually get to keep all your profits to pay yourself. Example, annually, <clears throat> total cash minus spending, equals net operating income or loss, which is all part of your profit and loss statement, your income statement. You don't know how to get cre cre started creating these documents. You can find free templates online, but as your business gets more profitable or more complicated, you'll need to consider working with a professional to manage these documents. So at the end here, uh, it's uh, kind of uh, a sample of a cash flows from your operating activities. Um, your first line is your cash receipts from all your customers. If you're running a restaurant, you know what a receipt looks like. Your cash payments to suppliers, you subtract that. Your cash payments for operating expenses, all your expenses, utilities, insurance, anything, bank expenses, anything, payroll, all of that. Cash payments for interest expense, cash payments for income taxes, all of that. You subtract all of that. And this is all cash payments. So you take your cash receipts, you subtract all your cash payments, and at the end, cash provided by operating expenses, and then it gives you another balance. So this is this will kind of um, this is the 
the third part of your financials that's really good to include uh, as part of your packet when you're, as I said, going out to um, uh, talk with your investors, um, your banks, anybody that wants, is um, interested in how you're running your business. Separate business and personal expenses. One of the most important and often most difficult rules to follow when running a small business is keeping your business and personal expenses separate. And I run across this all the time. Like um, people will come to me, business, uh, small business people, and say, can you help me to organize? And one of the very first question I ask is, how is your bank account? And they will tell me, well, I'm using my personal because I, I haven't separated it. And that's one of the things that I really encourage is to separate your business from your personal, um, your all in everything, your income, your expenses, all part, all parts of your running the operation of your business. That line is especially blurry when you first start out. So set up a separate bank account for your business right off the bat. Always, always. That's why I really encourage a, a lot of people. Track every business expense. Um, since you have, you'll have a separate business account use it to track every expense with receipts and a dedicated business debit card. This may seem simple, but it's super important to keep up with activity for tax purposes and profit monitoring. Example, envelope system. And I really encourage this is envelope system. If you are, have a bad habit of just accumulating uh, receipts here and there in every corner of your desk, in your vehicle, in your glove box, and you know, you have a lot of people and it, it's very common, very common when, when I go through people's um, accounting, this is what they give me. And it's all in one bundle, it's not separated. <laughs> So envelope system to track receipts by labeling type of business expense and loan payments. This should reflect a filing system in an office cabinet. Uh, you ne not necessarily don't have to have an office cabinet if you don't have any room for it, but you can have a small envelope, like my kind of like, um, with tabs in it and you can go to the store and get a box of envelope and label it, put it like gas receipts, um, office expense, office supplies, you know, all of this and start putting receipts in there and use it to track it monthly, like say um, maybe a bigger envelope, a manila envelope and put April expenses, April, the month of April, the month of May, the month of June and then just put them in there in each envelope and that will help not only you as a business owner be becoming organized but when you go actually go to your professional accountant they will will be really happy for you <laughs> because that that's what I find is a lot of people they get so overwhelmed with a lot of receipts and they get it all together and they put it on your desk. This is what I have. And I'm sitting there like, okay, you know, you need to sit with me and tell me what this is, what this is, you know. So I go through everything. By the time we're done, you know, it's all organized. And then once they I organize them, they are so happy. And then I start giving them envelopes. I said, use this. Even your business mileage book should be labeled. It should be for the year 2022, for year 2021, for year 2020. Whatever year that you're in, have a separate log. So things like that, your tax person will be so, uh, you know, um, so glad that you did this. Otherwise, they're the ones that are figuring out all of this for you, kind of like, you know, um, they get overwhelmed with it too. So if you become organized, 
and you do this, start doing this, making a good habit of it, you will you will make so many people happy. Your business will be at a good standing and everything, your reflection outward will be really good. Save important bookkeeping records. <clears throat> it's smart to keep these types of documents like payroll and inventory management for tax and other business purposes. A good rule of thumb to help you avoid getting caught without an important document yeah. is if you're in doubt, scan and save it. Scan and save your bank statements, your credit card statements, cancel checks, receipts, bills, customer invoices, customer payments, sales receipts, deposit slips, tax returns, 1099 forms, payroll documentations. This is, this is a small list, but there's so many other, as your business starts to grow, you will start, there's others, uh, documents that will start you will start generating and then it will be, become a part of your yearly expense close out for every year and you might start if, if, if your business is small right now your box um, your year in box might be a shoe box but as your business grows you're going to get into those bigger boxes pretty soon you'll have accumulated two or three boxes a year that's how it goes so what you have to learn to organize yourself so as you, you start growing your business you know you'll have a filing system that will become unbelievable making digi digital copies copies of bookkeeping records and storing them in a designated password protected file on your computer is an efficient way to keep them organized and easily accessible. Or you could get an old school file box and keep it on your on hand in your office. Either way, just make sure your storage system is secure and safe from the elements. All receipts fade over time. So the IRS likes to keep small, likes to allow small businesses to keep their records the last seven years. If you can keep the last 10 years, you're doing good. Okay. This is for audit purposes. So if they come in and say, we want to audit your business. Make sure that you have the last 10 years. If you, you've been operating your business for the last 10 years, I would recommend you have all those years with you and ready, available, okay? So you can have your professional accountant, you can hire a filing person and someone to help you to organize all of this for you. Uh, we, there's also a notebook system that you can use. You can, um, a filing cabinet, you can use that. Um, you can use boxes. Um, you can go to Home Depot, Staples, and you can use um, boxes. They have boxes there. And you label them. 2022, 2021, you know, um, start labeling everything. Color, color coding is a good system too if you have files like all your expenses in red all your payables in yellow all your accounts receivable in blue all your you know all your sales receipts in green you know those that's those are some of the color coding systems that you can use and always have contact information uh, on hand for anybody that wants, you can reach out to uh, collect uh, business cards, collect um, all kinds of contact information. A lot of these people in the business world, they are willing to help you and to help you and um, to lend a hand to you. So always keep that on file and, and let it be there and always um, network with them and by giving your information out there too. Keep accounting statements up to date. Sending an invoice isn't the same thing as money in your hand. 
That's why accurate cash flow statements are so important, depending on your customer's products and payment systems. You may be waiting on accounts receivable longer than you'd like. Without that payment from your customer, you may not have the cash you need to cover bills and other upcoming expenses. This is a great reason to keep an emergency fund for your business. Keep an eye on payments coming in and regularly check for invoices that have not been paid. You may need to send out some past due notices. So um, keeping on top of your accounts receivable is very, very important. Otherwise, you're going to go under real quick. You're going to be grasping for cash while well, that, that person hasn't given me um, their money yet. I haven't received a payment from so and so. So, you know, don't become the nice person. Be the one that becomes firm and then start, you know, checking your all your accounts receivable because you need that cash flowing in to pay your bills. Your debtors want their payments too. So you don't you can't um lag on your um accounts payable. When you have a good standing with accounts payable, it, it shows uh, you're in good faith with everybody. Keep an eye on payments coming in and regularly check for invoices that have not been paid. You may need to send out some past due notices. So make a good habit of that. Be prepared for major expenses. Even with your carefully maintained balance sheet and cash flow reports, it's hard to predict what will happen in the future. <clears throat> That's why it's good. It's always a good idea to plan for significant or surprises or significantly surprising expenses with a cushion of savings. I really rather have businesses be running debt free and be accumulating savings account on the side. Keep a separate emergency fund for your business. Save separate emerging, emergency funds for your business and personal life. Both should give you enough cash to cover your expenses for three to six months. For your business, that extra cash can help you cover unplanned large expenses that can't wait. For example, if you own a coffee shop, what would happen if your printer broke down and you had to wait until you save enough for a new one? Imagine all the business you could lose. But if you had the cash on hand, you could replace the printer and be back to normal in no time. So another thing that happens is <clears throat> personal and business. If you keep them separate, um, both in your personal life and on, in your business life, both areas you should have emergency funds. If you don't have emergency funds in your personal life, guess where you're going to dig into? You're going to dig into your um, savings in your business. You're, what you're doing is you're taking money that you have invested into your business, taking it back out for you. And you're gonna, if you start making a habit of that, you are going to run your business dry. Pretty soon, you're going to go under and it's just going to be a, a real hassle. So in both areas, you need to um, save money in both areas. Don't go into debt for your business. Always pay cash. You'll have less risk and your business will be profitable faster when you operate without debt. Put whatever you make in the business, <clears throat> especially in the beginning and live lean in both your business and personal life. A future without debt is worth it. So this is what I encourage is to, if you have a big, uh, uh, small business, if your sp small, small business has grown and you're making uh, 30000 a month each uh, month, 
uh, and that's your uh, if that's normal in your emergency fund should be 30 times three, 90,000 should be in your savings. So even in your personal life, um, if you have a payroll check of uh, 4,000 a month, you should have in your savings account 4,000 times three months, which is you should have in your savings $12,000. So that's the type of savings I recommend for both sides, your personal and your business. The accounting method your business uses will have rules about when and how to document revenue and expenses in your own records and in reports to the IRS. Get the right accounting method. It will affect how you track everything from your balance sheet to your cash flow statements. There are typically two types of accounting methods most business use. One is the cash cash basis accounting method, which is very simple. It's a simple method. It's cash coming in, cash going out. Income is recorded when you receive the cash and expenses are recorded after the bill is paid. This method gives you a real-time view of cash flow in your business. Uh, accrual accounting method is the IRS requires this method for businesses that deal with inventory and manufacturing big corporations they use this uh, accrual accounting methods revenue is matched with expenses regardless of when the cash is actually collected this method can be useful for businesses with lengthy business cycles if it takes long periods of time to collect money from a customer the accrual method will help you see the money coming in down the road where um, accrual system is used when you have accounts payable, accounts receivable, uh, inventory, you know, for how much inventory you have on hand. You have to um, uh, take inventory at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year, if your uh, cycle is from year to year. Um, so, you know, the, um, so there's two um, accounting methods that you can use. The cash basis method is usually the best choice for most businesses. However, if you deal with inventory and manufacturing, the accrual method would be right or even required for you. Ultimately, you and your tax pro can make the decision about which method you prefer. So those are some uh, on the right side, I kind of put some samples of journal sheets that um, how you can reflect what's going on in your business. Prepare for your personal and business taxes. This is where things can get really hairy for a small business. Don't wait until the last minute to prepare your small business taxes. Avoid surprises and errors by preparing throughout the year for these major taxes. Find out what business structure is best for your small business and what the tax implications are for that setup. File with application. If you're operating on the reservation, please file with the Navajo Nation uh, Business Regulatory Office. File with the Office of Navajo Tax Commission. If, uh, and if you're in, operating in the state of Arizona, uh, on or off the reservation, please file with the Arizona Corporation Commission and also file for with the IRS payroll tax. If you have employees, there are several steps required to file payroll tax returns. You'll need federal employer identification number, FEIN, and you'll need a state identification number for each, for each state your business operates in. These taxes must be deposited either semi-weekly or monthly and reported quarterly. Most new business deposit monthly. So <clears throat> sales, ta sales taxes, if your business sells products, you need to collect sales taxes from each one of your customers. Sales taxes vary, state, vary by state, county, and city, and also um, through the Navajo Nation. This gets even trickier if your company sells products in multiple locations or online. So be very... Um, uh, stay on top of it. Make sure that if you travel down to Phoenix, it's a different bracket uh, based on the, what county you're in. Um, a lot of times, um, a lot of, if you're off the reservation, 
uh, a lot of these sales techs are they're um, you don't have to ha um, have um, paid the Napa Nation sales tax, but if you're on the reservation, you're subject to Napa Nation sales tax, monthly, semi-annual, or annual report with payments. Since the bottom line with small business tax prep is to be diligent, zero, and in the loop at all times, talk to a tax pro to get help collect collecting sales tax accurately. Uh, tax information and forms, uh, some of the different types that you can use, uh, but there's three types of uh, businesses, sole proprietor, partnership, corporation, um, and under there, there's LLCs, um, uh, some other categories under corporation or partnership. Um, you have to have the federal tax identification number, the EIN number, employer identification number, uh, employee forms, Form W-2, Form W-4, W-9s, Navajo Nation Business Regulatory Office, Navajo Nation uh, Office of Tax Commission. And there's some websites for the IRS where you can get information uh, for the uh, state of Arizona. You go to the Arizona Department of Revenue, Google that, and it'll give you um, give you a page to where you can uh, link to and tap into their website. With the Office of Tax Commission, uh, the Navajo Nation Business Regulatory, uh, it's under uh, www.navajobusiness.com. So those are some of the uh, links that I'm sharing here with you. Um, and I also recommend uh, if your business is growing, you have no knowledge, very little knowledge of how to do uh, some of these accounting bookkeeping principles, and you you want to be organized and make sure you're filing, uh, keeping records of all your accounting for your business accurately, consider hiring an accounting or bookkeeping professional, at least temporarily um, for larger corporations. Uh, we recommend CEOs or CFOs, uh, project planners or uh, managers to be part of your business operation. For myself, um, I'm very familiar with QuickBooks. I offer my services for bookkeeping tools and software online and also desktop. So either way, you can go to Sam's Club, Costco, where all the businesses go and they can give you offer a package for at a lesser price um, than to the general public. So uh, you can go there, pick up a desktop pro plus and start, uh, you know, download it onto your desktop and it can be, uh, you can start um, training in it. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, um, um, look for a uh, bookkeeper, uh, accountant that's familiar with it, uh, take their services and it's very good to invest into looking for someone that is knowledgeable in this area and pay the fees that they charge to keep up the, the, book, the bookkeeping uh, tools and software information for you. Um, so that's what I have and thank you. Uh, is there any questions or um, any questions at this time? Yeah, hi, um, Arlene, I'm Cecilia So. I just wanted to, you know, say thank you. Oh my gosh, that was, that was so good. I'm, I must be a real geek or something, but <laughs> <laughs> I just loved the way you laid this out and, you know, put all the information in there. It's, it is a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So what I really liked was the slide where it talked about um, Navajo Nation. Mm -hmm. and how you register and things like that. Mm -hmm. We have a website called Build Navajo that kind of does that stuff too. But as, as a new business owner, what is the number one thing you can tell some of our um, cohort members, because they're attending here right now, um, what's, what's like the you know, if you could give any advice to a new business owner, what is like, what are the most important things about setting up your accounting? 
Um, one of the most important thing that I would uh, um, recommend everybody do is to um, set up their balance sheet, which shows uh, the value of your business. Mm. Um, if you're if you set up your balance sheet, uh, get to know what you're at, what you're investing into your business. All you list all your assets, and then you list all your liabilities. What you owe, what you what you are borrowing for this business, what you are investing into this business through those liability accounts. If you take your assets and uh, minus your liability, that will give you the basically the value of your business that you're starting out with. And that will give you a picture like, is it worth it going into this business? Mm -hmm. um, um, I've been taking notes here. So um, I think that's really great advice. And we're you know working with in the incubator program here and how do we get started in that business thing? And, and Christine Laughter also does the kinship program, which trains them in, um, you know, the accounting and the loans and things like that. But I think the number one thing, too, is that you said was like separating personal from business. Mm -hmm. And then what I also try to talk about is like, if you can't do that, you really miss out on a lot of tax um, yeah. write-offs and exemptions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I started doing that, I have a consulting business too. And when I started finally doing that, I'm like, oh my gosh, every, you know, you spend a lot of money that you don't realize on yeah. even things like, you know, internet or cell phones and, you know, that, that accumulates in over 12 months. So I just loved your presentation. You have a lot of great knowledge. Oh, I was mm -hmm. going to ask, you said you, you color code yours. So you mm -hmm. said you have the four colors. Can you repeat that again? Well, it can be, it starts with several. You can start with just the basic, but as you go along, you can add other colors, but, um, it, it doesn't matter which color you start using with, but color code all your accounts receivable, color code all your accounts payable, color code all your assets, color code all your expenses, color code all your revenue coming in. When you start color coding, uh, your filing system will be so much easier. Otherwise, you're like flipping through folders, they're all the same color, and you're so overwhelmed. So if you start color coding or even using notebooks to file all your expenses in one notebook, you're, you know, on down the line. And those that's your filing system that you can start with. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. And I also I have to say, OK, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to wrap myself out here. So I have just a folder with expenses for the month. Right. Mm -hmm. And and I have to keep these, you know, in in the receipts. And so that kind of reminded me of your envelope system mm -hmm. of just putting them in envelopes and things like that. Yeah. Um, OK, I'll let you answer Marco. I see Marco has his hand up here, but I have one more question for you at the end here, too. OK, um, oh. yeah, the, just one thing on the envelope system, I really encourage people that are starting out to use the envelope system. Mm -hmm. If you become a person that's um, picking up the habit of labeling everything, that will really help you. That will help you to become more organized. Go ahead, sorry. Um, that, no, thank you. That's That really actually helps me a lot as well. I just wanted to say thank you very much for um, some of your tips and also, it really is refreshing because I think one of the goals that I have this um, this year was to actually establish uh, cushion money, which was going to be three to six months of business expenses. And so just kind of like seeing that trajectory kind of echoed by you was really comforting for me because mm -hmm. I really hate accounting. No offense. Sorry, <laughs> but I just... it, it uh, I try and I really do try and keep uh, organized. <laughs> 
And I do use an, mm -hmm. an online Excel spreadsheet envelope system. So every time I get my receipts every month, I uh, separate them and I document them onto an Excel spreadsheet. That's way it's a little easier for me. But however, I have fallen behind by four months. So I have, um, and, and, and truth be told, that I actually started putting everything into a box. And so I'm switching back to my bad habit. And I think it's just the day-to-day -day, um, of, of going through my business. Mm -hmm. Like we just opened up a warehouse, we had renovations to our store. So a lot of big, big changes happened to our business. And I really fell behind. And I, what I wanted from you was maybe some tips of everyday things that I could do to kind of help the process of keeping my accounting afloat? And also, are you available for hire? <laughs> <laughs> that was my question too, Marco. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yes, I put my information at the beginning of the chat, my contact information, my email, and you can contact me there uh, for my services. But um, yes, from the beginning, Marco, just um, go back to your good habits of um, your envelope system and your filing system. And that's a big part of um, keeping records. So just go back to it. And, you know, uh, if you do that, um, you know, it, it'll, cut, it'll cut your expenses to your accountant. Let me tell you the truth. Um, because if I do it, all that is part of the rates that that I I put into, and I've done it before. Uh, some people they don't have the time for it, and I I warn them about it, and they give it all to me. Says, well, you know, I have to organize. You know, all of this is going to be part, and that's it. Just go for it, you know. So, but it'll cut the the your your uh, charges as far as what your accountant can do if you can give him or her everything that uh, has been labeled and everything, everything has been separated and give them all the bank statements, you know, and then it, it's gonna be done just like that in a jiffy. So, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, Eileen, there are a few questions and comments in the chat, I'll read them off for you and then you can answer. <clears throat> um, oh, okay. So we do have a comment from, let's see, actually we do have a question way back from Ira. He's asking is, is this, is the balance sheet in pounds? I already do want to ask her any questions. You can go ahead and come off mute. I think one of the sh one of the balance sheets you were sharing earlier. Oh, okay. In pounds, like meaning collecting, kind of like um, can I can I? Is she on here? Here is she on here? It Who looks was like that sorry, by Ira. It was, it was by Ira, yeah, but it looks I like I think he left. was teasing. I think that was like British pound, oh. like British money, pounds, <laughs> not US weight, dollars. the weight of accounting. Like it was, I think it was, yeah, human. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, even pounds is is revenue. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you can go ahead and come back and watch the recording. <laughs> okay. Uh, we do have a comment from Tim. He says, equity is the value of your business, according to one of your slides. Yes. And then, and then we have a question from Jerry. She's saying, um, is it best to open business banking, checking, savings, credit, all at the same time? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. I recommend that. You can, um, some people, they'll say, you know, well, I'm just going to go get the, the check-in first, get that started, and then I'll do savings later. Uh, it depends on if you want to jumpstart your savings right now and start your emergency fund. Uh, a lot of times, small businesses, when they start, they don't have the funds to put into emergency fund yet. So, you know, it, it all depends on how you want to do it. But if you do have uh, an investor that's right alongside beside you, uh, let's say take for example, um, he or she's giving you $40,000 and you want to invest $20,000 into the startup of your business. So you have $20,000 sitting there. Uh, where are you going to put it? You know, if you put in your checking, it's going to disappear real quick. So you have to make that decision like, I need to save a part of this for down the road when I can't collect. 
from my customers, you know, make sure that that money is sitting there. So things like that, you have to kind of make those decisions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then next question from Ryan Simonson is where can I find an accountant? Um, Marsha's told me it's very hard to find an accountant because there are little to none on the reservation. So I don't know. But, you know, we try to, me, myself, I try to put my information out there. Change Labs has, has had my business cards for a couple years now or more. And, and I'm available. I'm not sure. Um, I don't really have any other information as to who else is offering their services um, across the reservation. But are you yeah, in Flagstaff, I, Arlene? Oh, I live in Santan Valley, which is the outskirts of Phoenix. Yeah. Okay. But I do. I communicate by online email. Yeah. Um, I'm then, sorry, one, one quick question, Ra Raquel, sorry. Uh, so accounting for taxes is different, New Mexico, Arizona. Are you both sides as well proficient on both sides? Because I know taxes can can change a little bit on, from state to state. As long as you're, um, you're applying the right tax, sales tax from county to county, and that reflects on your um, paperwork, uh, the bookkeeping is the, the principles are the same nationwide. So as long as the balance sheet and everything is recorded uh, correctly, and you give it to your CPA, then they will, they're the ones that will deal with the, uh, the tax part. Yeah. And then Change Lab does have a list of accountants, native accountants that we're aware of. Um, if you want to email me and we can find a, an accountant for your area or your state as well. If, um, if you're if Arlene's not able to take on any extra clients, of course, and then if you're not based within Arizona. <clears throat> uh, next question. It's the same question. It's similar. Is uh, Rosalita? She's like, like to find a native accountant too. If y'all can recommend someone, Rosalita, you can reach out to Arlene, or you can reach out to Chains Labs. We can try and um, refer someone to you as well. Yes, and I speak Navajo too. All right, and then we have Sasha. <clears throat> She says, I also have been trying to use Excel to organize my revenue and expenses, but the spreadsheet that I've been using doesn't seem to like the right format. Do you have any tips and tricks to work the Excel format, Arlene? Um, I don't know what software. I'm more familiar with the QuickBooks, um, but basically all the um, accounting softwares, um, it's got the same lingo and I'm not sure um i probably have to look at it and see see what it's doing sometimes when you um you put it in the wrong category it'll come up different on the balance sheet but that's not what what it where it's supposed to be maybe it needs to be uh, recategorized you know uh things like that because some people they mix up like i would i mentioned earlier between payables and expenses between receivables and um, cash in stuff like that, so it it really um, um, depends on how you put into put it into your software. Yeah. All right, and it sounds like um, Sasha, you can reach out to Arlene. I did we put her contact information for any more information to elaborate on that too. <clears throat> Um, and then another question from Sasha it says, what bank do you recommend small businesses to sign up with? Oh, say that again, sorry. What bank do you recommend for small businesses to sign up with? Um, basically any bank. Um, everybody goes by the type of interest that, that, they, um, that the bank offers. Another thing is like um, bank charges. Sometimes when you overdraft, it all depends on the, the fees how their fees are set up. Uh, people, uh, I, I usually tell people, you know, the less the, the bank charges for overdraft, the, the better it is, you know. So anywhere you can, any bank that will be able to uh, work with you and set up your business account. I have a question following that. Are there any, so if you're start, first starting out, which a lot of our incubator members are, and um, you're considering bank options. Are what red flags do you know of that they should look out for as um, far as choosing a bank? 
as far as red flags, basically it's probably what I mentioned about bank charges, but normally um, that is, is kind of works in both ways from the, from the customers themselves, their spending habits, and then how they use their checking account. So if they're in the habit of overdrafting and using, um, you know, more than they, they have in their bank accounts, you know, um, they need to reverse their spending habits to where they keep, you know, a, a, a balance in there that, that they're able to cover any type of payments that are coming up. And um, that's where, where I was uh, really encouraging you to stay on top of your accounts receivables. Make sure that if you um, have accounts receivable, meaning customers that want to pay later, make sure that you're invoicing them and staying on top of it. Otherwise, if you overlook it, you know, um, they're, they're not, they're go it's just going to sit there and they're not going to pay you. And pretty soon you, you'll have a hard time collecting from them. So mainly um, the red flags, I haven't really come across any red flags from the bank. It's normally just uh, the habit of the, the um, us as banking there, you know, how we use uh, our money, how we spend it. That's what usually uh, brings up red flags, yes. We have a question from Leander Thomas. He's asking for if there, if you have any recommend, recommendation on any downloadable worksheets for a balance sheet available. Um, you can go to Staples. Staples has a really good journal book. You can go to Office Max. They have a really good journal book. I'm pretty sure they, you can probably download it through their store. I haven't really looked. Um, looked into those yet, but um, since I've been a bookkeeper for so many years um, and there was no computer at one time, you know, I used to go to the office products uh, stores and get all my journal books, journal sheets, and they usually have it. If you go up to customer service and ask them, where can I get a fine journal sheets for accounting? They'll take you directly to, to that shelf and they'll show you the different types that they have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be good for like the visual learners who want to write things down and like actually yeah. physically see that information. Yes. Awesome. And then next question is from Sasha again. We have when... When charging customers in a different state, do you add both Arizona and New Mexico taxes to the customer's total sales? No, no. Oh. Um, if you if you're charging, it depends on the county where you're selling. Like if it's online and you're in Arizona and you're ba you're based out of Arizona, and your home is in uh, Coconino County and you're selling to a person in New Mexico, you just charge them the Coconino sales tax. They pay the, the local tax there. And you, because that's where the sale took place was with you. And then you ship it to them, okay? Um, it doesn't, you don't need to include New Mexico tax because they didn't buy it there. So if you're traveling to, like you went down to Phoenix to the Indian market, you have where you're physically at and where you make that sale, you have to apply that sales tax there that's local to that um, area. If you're in Maricopa County, you look up Maricopa County sales tax online, the rates, and then you apply that. You should also have a sales privilege tax sales tax privilege certificate that you need to apply for. And that'll allow you to um, sell, um, go out to different parts of Arizona and, set, and uh, do your um, sales. And you can also go to New Mexico and get that same certificate from that state too. If you're in Nevada, you need to do that. If you're in California, you need to have their sales privilege tax form yeah 
-hmm. And then last one, uh, oh, actually not last one, but next one, we have a comment from Jonathan. He says, Excel and Google Sheets have balance sheet templates to help you get started as well. <clears throat> yes, yes. Uh, that's another thing. Um, I love Excel. I love Excel. So um, I can create sheets too. I can send them to you um, and, and get you started and, and things like that. If you're not familiar with Excel, then, um, you, you know, we um, you can go get, get a journal book and you can start um, writing everything down. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have a comment from RJ Husky. He says, I'd like to, I'd suggest everyone to take step to secure banking, email, online storage, and QuickBooks accounts while getting your business set up before sending or storing any sensitive information over the internet. Yes, thank you, RJ, RJ, Shiaj, thank you. Okay, and then we have Sasha, she's asking, would the would that be the TPT? I'll say that again, sorry. She's asking, would that be the TPT, the letters T, P, and T? Sasha, did you want to ask in person, verbally? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what the abbreviations are for TPT, but it's, um, would that be for the form to be able to um, make sales in different counties for the taxes? Tax, it's, it's called sales tax privilege form. Uh, the Arizona sales tax privilege form. TPT, let me see here. There's so many acronyms in bookkeeping. I have to. Yeah. RJ yeah. <laughs> method, transaction privilege tax. Yeah. Transaction privilege tax. Yeah. That one. Thank you, RJ. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shiaz. All right, and then we have Kara. Her question is, would Google Sheets work? Google Sheets, if it's compatible with Excel, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, and then next comment we have just from Rosalita. She says, Arlene, you are now my new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! All right. <laughs> All right, we are closing down, are cl getting close to time now. Did anyone have any last minute questions, last second questions right now before we let Arlene go? No, I'm just, I wanna say thank you again, Ashad. Thank you so much, Arlene. You had such mm -hmm. good information and it was laid out. I love the way you laid it out and rolled it out. Um, I know I'll be contacting you and, um, you know, probably asking a few more questions and, things like that. And, and it's just so good to know that there's Navajo accountants and bookkeepers out there that are really there to support, you know, us in starting our businesses and get it going. Mm -hmm. We can ask specific questions. I think for anything like your fees or things like that, I'm sure you have some type of, you know, system of how you, how you can uh, charge people. I know I have an accountant and she's, she does a couple of different things. You can pay like four times a year. You can pay monthly. Um, you can do things like that to where it's not such a big, you know, bam payment um, mm -hmm. once a year and things like that. So I know some, there's some flexibility and things like payment systems and, and yeah. stuff like that. So again, I just, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed your presentation. Sure. Thank you, Raquel. Yes, thank you for joining us and thank you to everyone else for being here with us. I do have, I'm going to share my screen one last time. I have one more announcement. All right, so I did put Arlene's contact information in the chat box again. Um, if you want to take down her phone number and her email. <clears throat> and then uh, for audience members, thank you again for being here and for all of your questions and participation. I learned a lot, but there's a lot of information here that um, Arlene shared. And thank you so much for putting together this presentation, like Cecilia said. Um, if you missed any part of Arlene's presentation, uh, we will have this recording available on YouTube uh, very soon, as soon as the final edit is ready. And if you have missed any part of my information or my presentation at the beginning of the session, uh, you can feel free to email me and it will be available on the YouTube recording as well. <clears throat> um, any other information about Chains Labs, you can reach out to myself. I can connect you to Cecilia or any of our business coaches. 
and um, we'll get you started with chainsaws and what we can do for you. Uh, last announcement is <clears throat> our workshop, which I have set up for next week, the 22nd Wednesday, starting at the same time at 11.30. This one is, isn't so much about uh, Business Basics 101, just more about taking care of ourselves as entrepreneurs, because I mean, a lot of us, a lot of entrepreneurs and uh, small business owners and big business owners, we sometimes lack in taking care of ourselves, you know, self-care. And we have Jordana Saunders. She's from, I believe, Kayenta area on the Navajo Nation. She, her business is based in Phoenix, Arizona. <clears throat> so she'll be coming online with us to talk about how we can uh, best put ourselves forward, uh, taking care of ourselves, mostly mentally. She is a, a therapist, a licensed therapist. I don't have the business name up here, but if you look online on Facebook, I have it on our Chains Labs website. You can register for the workshop right now. <clears throat> and that's a lot of what I have. But thank you so much, everybody. Um, Christine, Sasha, yes, Christine can help with bookkeeping. She would be, if you want to reach out to her as a um, coaching, a coach, you can sign up for Christine's day. Look on the, the website, nativestartup.org slash event, and Christine's appointment will be there. If you want to book an appointment with Cecilia, her appointment's there as well, <clears throat> as well as um, many of our other staffs. Um, oh, yes. And Christina, yeah. you are part of our, our cohort. So you can book an appointment with Christine anytime, like what Cecilia has in the notes in the chat box there. Yeah. You just email. You have you should have our emails. You just email us and set up an appointment. There's no need to, you know, wait wait for a Monday call or things like that. Mm -hmm. Thank right. thank you, Raquel. That is one of the perks of being part of our cohort. You have access to all of our um, coaches, all of our staff members, including myself, even Heather, our executive director. You have access to them, and that is a really good perk. And you can they have so much information to disperse. <clears throat> like even Tim, Tim can talk to you about Bitcoin. You can make an appointment with him. So if you're interested in our incubator program, please reach out to Cecilia. Um, I can put that in just the chat box too. Her email is cecilia at nativestartup.org. Yeah, should be on the website too. Yeah, her email should be on the website. And then that's it for today. Thank, Thank you, you Raquel. Yay. Thank you. We'll see you guys next week, hopefully. And then I will post our work March workshop very soon as well. Keep a lookout for those. And I hope you guys have a great day. I'm in Flagstaff and it's really, really cold and snowy. So yeah. I hope everyone traveling safe. If you don't need to travel, I hope you're keeping warm at home. And we'll see you next time.